Hey, if you're a photographer or you're new to photography and you use Lightroom to edit your photos, then presets can be one of the best and most efficient ways of editing your photos and learning just how to edit in the first place. And that is why I have created 52 free Lightroom presets for you to download and uh, try for yourself over at free photography presets. Dot com, which you can see right here. Uh, you're going to go to this page and you can just find a bunch of information on presets and then at the bottom there, then you can sign up for the presets. But one of the things that I love so much about presets is just how quickly they can uh, really do a number on your photos. So today I'm going to take you through some of these shots right here and we are going to talk about um, several things like when to use Lightroom presets, why you would use them, and just how to get the best uh, and the most bang for your buck, even though these ones uh, are free here. So again, these are photos that I have uh, gathered from the community of photographers over in the Beginner Photography Podcast Facebook group. They sent me some photos to try out, and I'm going to show you how I would edit these photos and how presets can just help uh, uh, make the whole thing a little bit better. So we'll start with this photo right here. This photo is from Steven. And we're one thing that I like to do when uh, I start off is that I will take the photo that comes straight out of camera and then I will apply a preset to it. So if you downloaded the 52 Lightroom presets, then this is what it's gonna look like for you, right? All of the uh, presets right here, BPP presets. There's 52 of them. So as I look through these presets right here, if you don't know what a preset is, a preset is kind of like a, uh, it's a file that saves a bunch of settings. So if you can see over here in my light panel, you can see, or in my uh, edit panel right here under the light section, there's no adjustments made to this photo whatsoever. But when I hover over a preset, you can see that uh, a lot of the uh, sliders will go ahead and change. And that is because these presets have those settings saved into this file so that when you click on it, it will make those adjustments to this photo. So the easiest way to think of it is like a filter. It is a filter that you are applying over your photos. But the great thing about these filters um, being Lightroom presets is that they are infinitely adjustable after the fact. So it's not one click, you're done. It is one click and then you can go in and uh, you know change up how you like your greens, or you can add more, or you can, uh, you know, change the temperature of your image, you can change the tint of your image, and you can just do a bunch of uh, different things, of course, to how your photo looks. Uh, and that is why I think that presets are so valuable, because for one, they allow you to see what is possible in the different, um, you know, expand your creative vision to, to get closer to what it is that you saw in your head when you were shooting the photo. So as you can see right here, like this photo, this looks good. It looks warm, it looks kind of dreamy, it looks, uh, you know, a little bit contrasty, but just enough to where it's, you know, it's edgy, but it's not too edgy. But then you go up to here, this one also looks good. The shadows are a little bit cooler, um, and it has more of a, a you know, a different vibe, kind of a vibrant uh, type vibe to it. But then you go up here, and then you see something totally different. And all of these photos are, you know, they're okay. You can give them a shot, but um, every single one is a little bit different, and again, just expands your creative idea for what a photo could be. Reason number two why I love using presets is that they can create some consistency throughout your work. So if you go into every single photo and you adjust the exposure a little bit, the contrast a little bit, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, you come into the uh, tone curve, you adjust your colors, here in the color mixer, you're going all crazy with all these different colors, and then the next photo that you go to, you have to do the exact same thing, then eventually you're inevitably going to get uh, variations in your photos. For one photo, you might like uh, more of a teal green, and in another, you might like a bit more of a yellowy green. But when you look at the whole body of your work, it doesn't create consistency. Whereas when you uh, find a preset that you like, like this photo right here, it's a little bit faded, the shadows are, um, are a little bit magenta, they're a little bit warmer. Um, if all of your photos look like that, right, then there's going to be consistency. You're going to have, and that's how you find and start a style, is that there's consistency throughout your images, whether it be the subjects that you're shooting or the edits that you are giving your photos. And for new photographers, I think that this is the just one of the, uh, the easiest way to level up 
your photos because I know how hard it can be in the beginning when it comes to editing and everything just looks off a little bit uh, and you know photos don't match from one to another and this way you can ensure uh, that you are going to have that consistency throughout your images. Reason number three why I like presets is that they can really speed up your editing process. So the first wedding that I ever shot solo, it took me a month to edit the uh, entire wedding. And that's because every photo that I was going through, I was adjusting the exposure, then I would do contrast and highlights and shadows and all these things for every single photo that I did, which, you know, for that wedding was a thousand plus. And I thought to myself, like, I'm burnt out, you know? I love photography and I love shooting, but if it's gonna take me a month to edit a day's worth of photos, I'm not gonna be able to do this long term. Presets allow you to, look, we'll just go to Idaho right here, right? So if you look off to the side, there's no adjustments being made, but we hover over Idaho and already you can see one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, and six things just right here that I'm just, you know, that are just first glance right here. Six settings that are being changed that, um, save you six clicks, you know? It's one click and then six, 10, 12, 20 different things could be changed to get your photo closer to how you want it. So with the less clicks for every photo that you do, the more time is going to be saved. And on top of that, within Lightroom, you can also do what's called batch editing. So I can click on Idaho here, right? And then I can go and copy those settings and then just go to all of these photos down here and apply the same um, preset to those photos. So now, not only have you created consistency, but now you've sped up your editing uh, workflow exponentially because everything is starting with the same base for you uh, to work on from there. Now note, this is super important. Lightroom presets are not, they are not a one click solution. There is not a one size fits all uh, preset that is gonna make every photo look great. When it comes to presets, presets are a base for you to start with find a creative vision, um, and then adjust from there. So you will never find, I take that back, there, there are some times where you can just click a preset and then the photo looks perfect. But 99 times out of 100, you will click a preset and you're just gonna find one aspect of it that you like and then tweak from there. So it still requires you to do uh, work as far as the rest of the editing goes, and that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. So. All right, here we are back in uh, back in Lightroom here. So again, step one for me is usually just kind of like let's like see if I can just find some inspiration, and I'll just you know bounce around between the photos. And oftentimes it depends on what I'm going for. But if I'm looking for something more natural, or if I'm going for something more stylized, if I, like if I go here, this to me says you know uh, kind of um, um, you know 50s, kind of that like. Uh, very uh, uh, overexposed uh, type feel that when they were shooting black and white, there just was not a lot of latitude in TV. And therefore, things are kind of washed out, but at the same time, uh, you know, exposed. And there's a little bit, a lot less contrast in these photos. Uh, so let's say I'm going for something 1950s here. I like this look, uh, but I also want it to be warmed up a little bit. So we can get out of these presets right here and then go back to the editing. I think that the light is, it's definitely okay on him. It could be toned down a bit on her. So uh, I'm actually going to bring up the exposure just a little bit to match the, to, to get the shadows where I want them to be. And then I'm gonna bring down the highlights a touch right until they are kind of taken care of uh, for what it is that I'm looking for. And right there, I think that that looks good. They're not blown out, but still my attention goes to her because that's one of the brightest parts of the frame. And then honestly, I think that this photo just needs a little bit more color to kind of to kind of round out the, uh, uh, the 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 1950s, the 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 vintage uh, look to it. I think that that looks good. I'm not gonna touch the vibrance or anything like that. And then maybe I will just kind of tone down the clarity. Uh, once again, just to kind of remove a, just a bit of that sharpness, a bit of that clinical digital uh, sharpness that we get from today's uh, wonderful cameras uh, without looking too dreamy. And then maybe up the texture just a touch. And then there, I like that photo right there and I'm going to keep it just the way that it is. So next photo we're gonna go to, this one comes from Mike. Uh, 
So this photo is an interesting one, right? Because uh, of the of the mixed lighting that we have in the background, it looks like probably just traditional tungsten lighting. But on these two right here, it is very um, you know purple. It's very magenta. So what we're gonna do? The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, come down to my tent and I'm gonna bring it down and try to get it uh, close as close to natural as I can here and unfortunately let's see if we bring this up that looks pretty good right there again this is gonna be a real tough situation to shoot in maybe I'll bring down the magenta even just a touch more and then we can go up to our presets and then we can find something that is going to work for us Ooh, you know what actually I kind of like See, so like, this is where you can get the inspiration from. I like the black and whites because it looks, it looks honest, I guess. Um, but colors also have something to be said for them as well because this is a scene that is already very bright and it's very colorful. And, you know, you can do several things. You can lean into that if you want to. Or uh, you can go black and white. So I am going to, I'm going to stick with black and white for this one, actually. I think that that brings more attention to her and her eyes right there. So let's find one. And I like this one. It's kind of uh, silvery. It's kind of warm a little bit as opposed to just like a, a traditional monochrome type look. So I'm going to go to first love right here. So now, I, once again, I can close out my presets and then I can go into light here which I like and then I can play around with these settings all right so now I got this next photo here from Mike and I like this because uh, clearly it's a concert um, we got a uh, um, you know lead singer he's on stage here so we can do something fun because the whole background is uh, gonna be dark and while they are going to be uh, lit right so you can see real quick you know, you put something like Double Agent on it or Definitive and how the background becomes uh, faded and it becomes kind of muddy, right? The shadows. But if you get on here to Exploration, then, wow, uh, the shadows come up quite a bit, which you can see over here in the, um, uh, into the, uh, uh, the light panel uh, where the shadows are boosted 40%. And that gives us the view into kind of what's behind the stage as opposed to the original. Now, if I'm looking at the original, then I look at exploration, I realize, you know what, there, like the information in the background, it doesn't really mean anything to me. It's not really what uh, I want to see. But I really like just about everything else in this photo. I like the color. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. So while I like the rest of the photo, I don't really want to see the background. So I can uh, increase the contrast, right? And then I can even bring down the shadows a bit more. And now we have a photo, and I'm actually going to bring up, I like the colors, but I'm going to uh, warm it up just a touch and then bring up the vibrance, right? Just to try to get a little bit more of that, uh, uh, that yellow and that light coming in uh, that's pointed right at him there. And now I have a photo that I used a preset on, and even though I didn't like an aspect of it, I like the rest of the preset, and I was able to come in and custom adjust uh, the photo to or my settings to match how I like the photo and that again is why presets are so so powerful here all right now we are going to move on to this beautiful photo right here and what's great about this shot that you can see is that the light looks great on her right she's in even soft lighting uh, which is just perfectly complements the human face whereas you know if she was 10 feet back uh, all the light would be coming through the trees and it would just be all over her face and it wouldn't be as um, as as pleasing to look at, I suppose. So uh, we already have a good strong base here and that's going to really help us when it comes to these presets because that's going to allow us to have more flexibility. So let's go down here. We can see that low and slow is a lot has a lot of saturation, right? The very vivid colors. So we're just going to keep coming up here. Uh, maybe double agent that looks a little bit uh, uh, not enough of what I'm looking for dart ooh that one kind of looks like an old Polaroid I like that conjunction Congo confidence okay let's go ahead and ooh bleach bypass see that's not what we're looking for here in this photo we're looking for something a little bit lighter we're looking for something a little bit more um, uh, softer you know on the eyes I suppose so let's go ahead and come down 
some more. This one's called Too Perfect. And yeah, that one is a little bit too much for this photo right here. But I'm going to show you later on why, um, you know, so a photo like this, which just looks like a bunch, uh, I'm going to show you uh, that this can work on other types of photos. So we're going to go with, you know what, I really like this sturgeon right here. Now, what do I like about it? I like how... Um, I like how it feels. I like that it's very, um, it's very soft and it's very easy uh, for us, but it's too blue. So once again, I found a preset that I like and I'm just going to make a change to it. I'm gonna bring it up to about 6,000 uh, for, the, for the white balance, the temperature of the white balance. That's kind of my go-to there. And then I'll readjust, I'll look at it. I like it, but it still looks just a bit too normal, I suppose. So I'm gonna keep going up because I want this to feel real warm and I want this to feel like summer memories, right? I want you to look back at this photo and feel like, yeah, that was summer right there. That's a, that's a summer evening. Okay, so I like that color. And now I want to bring up the shadows just a bit and then the overall exposure as well and kind of give it uh, a bit more of a, a you know, that bright, uh, warm feeling. Uh, and then just a touch more contrast. And then I think that that is good right there. Let's see. You could even add just a bit of texture. Uh, you don't want to go too heavy on the clarity. Um, but this just gives it more of a, um, uh, uh, I don't want to say realistic feel. Um, but it just gives a little bit more depth to it. It gives a little bit more power to the, to the photo right there. And then, you know, you can always play with a vignette and then make it look like it came from uh, Sears or JCPenney's. Or you can just, um, you know, go very slight on the other edge to make it so that it's uh, so that it's dark here. And then once again, just bring the focus on to her right there. And I don't think that this is too distracting because in this corner, it's already darker. On this corner, uh, it's uh, it's it doesn't stand out because there is this visual element. And then on top, it's also already darker. There's just naturally this patch of light behind her in a circle pattern. So what we're doing is we're just emphasizing it with the uh, vignette here. So this is good. All right, so remember how earlier we had that preset called Too Perfect, and it just seemed like, whoa, that is a lot. And normally you would look at this photo and think, nope, you would just pass right by it with this preset. But I'm going to show you something interesting because we got this adorable little photo right here. But if you use the same preset, Too Perfect, hey, it kind of works. So what's the difference? What is the difference in this? And this is where it comes into figuring out, like, how um, presets can work best for your photography. So if you're the kind of person who shoots, like this photo right here, this is very middle of the road as far as exposure goes. I would say that this is properly exposed. It's right down the center. It's not a little bit over, it's not a little bit under, it's right in the center. And in this situation, it is, you know, we can see what the preset does is that it brings down the blacks 100% and then it brings up the contrast which again is going to uh, expand that difference between white and black and therefore because this was shot properly exposed it really is going to make the photo look under exposed but if we go to this photo right here the majority of the photo is very bright there's not much dark darkness to it and therefore when we reduce um, the uh, the blacks and introduce contrast, it's not as big of a difference uh, globally to the entire photo, and now it just works. So this is a situation where, you know, another reason why I love presets is that they can teach you more about your photography and how the edits that you make can really make a difference because if you love these high contrast type scenes, if you love this look right here where the blacks are just crushed and there's a lot of contrast, you're going to know going forward that when you go out to shoot, not to shoot an already uh, dark scene because when you do that, this preset is just going to destroy the image, but if you like to shoot um, brighter uh, colors, things that are uh, you know on the overexposed side, then this might be a good option for you. So then, what if you like that look, but you want to, you know, use it on this photo right here? What do you do? Well, one thing that you could do simply is just bring up the exposure. So now, whoa, look at that shot right there. We went from this, which nobody liked 
to now, you know, this, which looks like it could be, you know, an almost finished product. The contrast looks great. We crushed the blacks, but because now we brought up the exposure, um, now the rest of the image works for this preset. So again, presets and photography can go hand in hand by teaching you not only how to edit better, but also how to shoot um, for your edit. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, now we got this photo here from Susan. And let's see, so I'm looking at the photo. This photo is from uh, Disney World, I believe. And we can see, I think this is the Tree of Life, they call it. And there's just a lot of really beautiful, interesting details that feel um, uh, mystical, feel kind of whimsical, I suppose, right? So we kind of want a preset to, to match that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start looking at these. Oh, I like that one right there. Let's see, if, let's start again from the bottom. Let's see, no, too much tomorrow. Oh, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. Oh, but time's passed as well. See, here's a situation where it's like, I like these two different um, presets. And I'm going to, oh, that one looks good as well. Hmm. So I want something that stands out. I'm going to choose, I'm gonna choose times past. Times past feels, um, you know, like a, like, a, like a faded old, um, you know, ectochrome uh, type look to it. So, uh, but we can still, we can still do quite a bit to this photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to bring up the exposure and the I'm gonna bring down the highlights and see if I that I can save just a bit of the sky. I'm gonna bring up some of that shadow detail from uh, from down here. We'll just close this preset panel and then I'll go down to color and see if I can boost it up a little bit more into the into the warmth. Yeah, see this is looking like these colors don't look they look natural, but at the same time, like you wouldn't see them in nature, and therefore. Uh, makes you just just take a second look and and really uh, you know makes the photo a little bit more compelling and asks you to dive in a little bit more. So I'm gonna as we can see that the preset already uh, introduced a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna get in close and I'm gonna see you know what a little bit more can do for this. And I think that that's enough without going too far. And then clarity is going to um, essentially add a little bit more contrast and separate the. Uh, uh, the brights and the and the darks there, and yeah, now so instantly uh, we can uh, see that there is detail in the tree, which from the beginning uh, we could see it, but it just wasn't as predominant. And then now we kind of get this look, and it feels it just feels like a little bit different, and I like that. So I think this photo is good. Okay, we got this photo here from Caroline, um, and what I like, obviously, I like the the light trails, I like the uh, the on camera flash, and it just looks very party mode right here. So let's have some fun with this one. All right, let's just start looking down. Uh, maybe influence right there. Ooh, I like how there's more contrast, there's more saturation in that. That one's a contender, low and slow. No, what I want is. Uh, I want to highlight the uh, the fun feeling, the uh, like what what makes this photo unique. And again, it's these light trails right here, and uh, just that party feeling with that on camera flash right there. So um, finding something that is going to uh, lean into that is really going to make this photo um, something special, right? So I think that that looks good right there, just the pack. But then there was also was it influence? No, I don't know which one was it. I think, let's see. So I like the pack right there, honestly. It's just, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more contrast, a little bit more saturation, but let's see if we can do anything more with it because now uh, the shadows have gotten, and the highlights have been um, uh, messed with so that we're seeing like maybe a little too much detail. So let's go ahead and, and I think that's because the contrast there. Let's go ahead and bring up the highlights once again to really emphasize that on camera flash bright uh, type look will bring down the shadows just a bit because everything that's in the shadows is like in the car and we don't really need to see those so we can just hide those with that um, uh, slider right there and I'm actually gonna cool down the image just a touch Let's see what it looks like warmed up yeah no warmth at night doesn't really work for me I don't think so I'm just gonna bring it down a hair and I think that that's it once again kind of lends to the whole like 
you know, a little bit uncomfortable because uh, night is just a slightly different time of day, obviously. Um, but, you know, we have this uh, things happen differently at night, whether it's you're going to go out, there's a different energy, there's a different mood to it. And that coldness kind of feels like there is um, um, a little bit of, of um, excitement, like building within you, like uh, like what could happen throughout the night. So I like that a lot. And I think, you know, once again, this photo, it doesn't need much. And this is done. All right. Now we have a wedding photo here from Kim. And as you can see, the photo is by her uh, own uh, admission is underexposed and, and you know we can we can definitely see that here it's a very dim photo so when you go to add a preset onto this photo it can be difficult to get a real feel of what the photo is going to look like so if it helps you you can just bring up the exposure to where it's about you know it's closer to what you want the finished photo to look like and then from there you can go ahead and look and see what you find. So already right there, this definitive looks fantastic. But if we start it back at the beginning, the definitive, let's see, looks just kind of underwhelming there, right? It just looks muted and that's all that it is. So again, if we bring up the exposure to closer to what we want and then try to find a preset, then suddenly you realize like, oh wow, actually this does quite a bit for the photo in terms of the shadows and it reduces the contrast a little bit and it looks a little bit more dreamy. And you wouldn't be able to tell that when the exposure was what it was shot at. So this is an example of, uh, now Kim is, 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 she's a good photographer already, but every once in a while we go out there and we take a photo and you know, maybe we mess up the settings or whatever it is, but the better that you can get in camera to shooting it how you want it to, you know, be at the end, the faster presets are going to help you edit your photos uh, and just get more consistent results because presets need a good base to go to start from and then you can like edit from there. But when you already start with a solid base, then the amount of editing in terms of, you know, coming over here and making tweaks and all this stuff uh, drops dramatically because the photo is already as close as you wanted it to be uh, in camera. All right, now we got this photo here from Dwayne. And one thing that I like about this, first of all, I like the, uh, you know, the composition. We got nice um, uh, lines, leading lines up to our couple. And then we also get a good view of uh, the city or downtown. And it's just a very fun photo for the couple. Also, we, fantastic placement. We have good, uh, soft, even light on them. But also, we have that sun peeking in, giving them just that golden kiss off to the side. So let's see if we can find a preset that is going to highlight those things, right? So that kind of takes away from it. Ooh, I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with this. Right away, I found it. We, we already get some softness. We get more detail in the um, background back there. However, the whole photo, it's a little bit more magenta from my style. So I'm going to, I'm going to close out this preset box. I'm going to bring down the magenta a touch. All right. So that it's closer to what it was. I'm going to bring up the, uh, the warmth and the white balance. And then I'm actually going to come up here and we can see that even though the, the contrast has been brought down, it's still a pretty contrasty image. And that's just because of the light that was there. And that's it, right? So I'm actually going to bring down the highlights a bit more just so that we get a little more sky detail. And then I'm going to bring up the texture and then down the contrast just a little bit more so that it doesn't feel so robotic, I guess. Oh, but that's a little bit too much. I think just right right in there looks good. And there we go. I like it. So there you have it. As you can see, presets can really do a lot for your photography in terms of finding, uh, you know, giving yourself some inspiration, speeding up your workflow, teaching you how to edit, and also showing you, you know, what differences uh, you can make in camera when shooting just so that you can get the best out of your uh, presets and your edits when you bring them into Lightroom. So again, if you haven't already, feel free to download my 52 free Lightroom presets by heading over to freephotographypresets.com and just grabbing your um, uh, copy today. There's no upsell, there's no gimmick, there's no nothing like that. Like I truly just wanna give you these presets because I've, I've been where you are. As I said earlier, I know what it's like to, to dread editing. And when you dread editing, that can make you dread photography because the more photos that you take, the more photos that you gotta edit. 
And I don't want that for you. I want photography to be something fun. I want photography to be something that you look forward to. I want photography to be that thing that, you know, gives you your creative release that you are looking for. And if one day that means going into business, then then that's fantastic. But if today that just means that you want to take photos of your kids or nature or your everyday life and you want something beautiful to come out of it, I want to help you get there. And I truly think that using presets is one of the best ways to get started with this. Now, I don't think that when it comes to presets, like I give you 52, right? But the idea is that you are going to find things that you like, whether it be contrast or how your greens look or how your magentas look, um, how you want your tone curve to be. And then you are going to create a preset on your own. You're going to create your own signature look based on the things that you just naturally do, uh, the settings that you change every day with your, with your regular photos. And then over time, you know, maybe you'll go from 52 down to 12. And then, you know, you'll be sticking with those 12 for, you know, a year or two. And then you're going to find that you kind of whittle yourself down to five, six, um, and maybe even just two. And then eventually that's where you're going to really just dive deep into that preset and make it as valuable as possible for you so that when you click a button, the photo is as close to done as possible. And then you can just make minor tweaks as far as exposure um, and things like that go, exposure, white balance, and then the photo is done. So again, I hope that this helped uh, show you how valuable presets can be and how that you can implement them into your own photography. If you got any questions, feel free to let me know. I'd be more than happy to help and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.